place on campus Bowl. This is the interpretation center, which will give you a very much better and perhaps clearer overview than I'm giving you right now of a lot of the different things out there. And you can do it at your own pace. Okay. Um, but as I mentioned, fresh water is a problem, so now they're looking at desalinization plants in Santa Cruz, um, purifying the water that's coming up in San Cruz Bowl. Um, there are different constitutions for that, but also they're looking at different uh, solutions in terms of energy on the islands also. Um, again, the people who are active into this, again, this list is running off the page, but the farmers, the fishermen, the tourism agencies, police, etc. It's a small town out there with government involved, lots of different foundations, and groups such as lead adventures that uh, come into play. So more research can be done. All right. Again, I'm gonna ask you to translate. Um, it's a civic plaza, mm -hmm. and please don't touch the marine wolves. Marine wolves. Think of marine as sea. Oh, the sea lion. Sea lion. In Spanish, it's lobo, which is wolf, but in English, we call them lions. Uh, so don't touch sea lions. It's, I mean, it's a pretty simple rule, but there are reasons for it. Aside from the fact that the sea lions can bite you, and people do get bitten. Right. But if you're able to interfere with their ecology, even though they can be very close by you, you can be sitting at a restaurant and they're you know, 10 feet away uh, while you're at the restaurant. But and it's sometimes difficult to resist the temptation. But yeah, you should keep a little bit of distance. And so simple rules make a big difference. Uh, new energy solutions. Do you guys ever hear about the Jessica? It's a uh, it fuel bowl, bringing fuel in for energy generation, for electricity, burning for electricity in the Galapagos and for the boats. They're used out there. And it's textile. Oil sits in the Galapagos. We got lucky. You know, wind helped bring some of that uh, away from the mainland and concentrated it, made it easy to clean up. But, it, you know, it brought the international attention to the problems of having so many people in the Galapagos and their needs. And so things like wind energy. The idea, whether it'll happen or not, but the idea is to have by 2016. Uh, and the use of fossil fuels in the Galapagos. We hope we can get there. Alright. Um, I think I'm just waiting again for the next slide to come up. No? I'll try again. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, a few things you can do, or well, one of them you're already doing. I said the volunteer work is really important. So, yeah, again, one more time. Thank you. Uh, knowing what you're eating and wearing in the Galapagos. It's much better controlled in the Galapagos itself than it used to be in terms of eating things out of season. This fine lobster is another delicacy that people like. Uh, cool animals, also good eating. Uh, but there's a season for it to try to give them a chance to reproduce uh, and maintain their population. Uh, and when the season's over, you know, fish people seem like they're upset. In the past, twice, Charles Darwin station was taken hostage by fishers, fishermen who were upset about the end of the season or about the low numbers they were given to collect that year because they were living even during the season. Uh, and then, so the government said, okay, take some more, please give it back to Charles Darwin station, and the population declined. Uh, but now there's a chemical, which is the fishing, uh, and I'm a few term, but they're almost all men, so I'll say fishermen. The fishermen are now part of the council of scientists with government representatives, park officials, and they make the decisions together before the season starts. And so now the fishermen actually help control one another, so there's less illegal fishing. The restaurants are cooperating more about not selling out of season, uh, but it's still something of an illegal market for export. Okay. Uh, and then the type of tourism that you do, you know, going with these adventures is a really good decision. <laughs> uh, in part, I talked about the percentages of, of money that stays with in the Galapagos. Even if you've got to lead adventures through another organization in the state, the amount of money that is actually channeled directly to people who live and work in the Galapagos is much greater doing this type of thing than booking a cruise ship uh, through Orbis, uh, travel lastly. Um And so these local boats that do day trips uh, are run by local people who uh, live in the Galapagos. I'm not suggesting that you guys arrive on the front of the boat without the uh, light jackets or anything else like that. Don't do that. That's the rules. Um, but really, 
it does help a lot more than a tight trial. Okay. Um, 